What's up everybody, I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade and Z-Wade Photo, and today we're going to do an in-depth review of the Nikon ZFC. But before I do that, I want to invite you to zwadephoto.com. You can check out my personal art portfolio, and if you want, swing by the print shop and pick you up a print. If you want to help support the channel in another way, you can consider making a small donation in the PayPal link below. But if you don't want to spend any money, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I hope you'll just consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. I think I want to go through the bad things first, and if they really apply for firmware or whether they're just fundamental design flaws. I'll go into that just briefly, but I want to get the bad stuff out of the way first because I want to end on a positive note. I'm not going to talk about the ergos of this camera and call them terrible because it feels like an older film camera should. They didn't have like a grip on the, the FM2 or anything like that. And so you can't really fault this camera for having bad ergos, especially with heavier lenses, because it is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to replicate an, an older film camera, and that's exactly what it does. So don't give me any lip on that. The first thing I have here is it feels cheaply made. The second thing I have here is the eye relief. I feel like the eye relief is, it seems like, like kind of small, or maybe it's the EVF inside there. It, it just is a little bit small. It kind of, like setting the diopter to what works for me, it kind of like makes my head hurt whenever I kind of first start shooting with it. But I mean, after a little bit, like everything adjusts, but it just, like I can't get the whole EVF in there when the diopter is set to what works like for my eyes. And so I feel like if the eye relief was a little bit bigger, I might be able to see the full EVF. The next thing I have is the focus points are kind of hard to move around because you don't have the little thumb dial thing, uh, the little thumb joystick, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, that you have on the Z6 and Z7 and 6.2 and 7.2. Uh, that is not necessarily a horrible thing in, in a less expensive body, but I do really miss that. However, I do counter that with, you know, pretty much just leaving this camera in auto area. It seems to do a really good job of finding something that now, I may not necessarily want to shoot, but something that is worth shooting. It doesn't do a lot of the stupid stuff where it's just trying to find anything else except something relevant that I actually find to be a problem in the Z6 II sometimes. And so the auto area AF, I think the ZFC is a little bit better than, than the, the Z6 II. However, that is a fundamental flaw. It's a design Maybe not flaw, but it is a feature that's missing. It, it, it really can't be fixed. The next thing I have listed here is the battery, which is, that's obviously not the ZFC, but it takes a different battery than my other cameras. And so the battery that comes with it could really use an update. I believe I shot about 150 shots and I lost a third of the battery power. And so if you do the math on that, I haven't run this battery completely dead, but that's like 450 shots and that's not particularly great. Now it is plenty if you're just going out to use it the way I use it, just kind of shooting it in the background, uh, taking pictures of other photographers, taking pictures of subjects at the meetups, and just kind of having it with me whenever I go anywhere to, to shoot whatever may happen on you know some kind of freak occasion where something exciting happens and I want to have a camera on me. It's fine for that. But um, you know my Z6 II gets uh, way more shots off than that. I mean at least double or, or better. You know, so it just needs uh, like an update. I will pay a little bit more money for an updated battery that, that I can get uh, a few more shots off with, even though I don't normally shoot that many photos. I like the assurance of, you know, having a battery that has pretty good life to it in case I accidentally leave it on for a while. The final bad thing that I have found out so far, obviously one of the main reasons why I wanted a ZFC was for use in the studio. I'm looking at myself right now and I can see that it's focusing on my eye. Um, and that's just a little bit better for me than SnapBridge. Uh, but whenever you swing the screen out at a certain point, the screen itself, the, the information that it shows you, it changes. And one of the things it gets rid of is the mic level. And that's really kind of inconvenient, isn't it? And so I don't know, like if I'm making a video and my lav mic dies, 
I won't know until I'm done and it's in Premiere Pro and I'm like working on editing the video. And that is a big, big problem. That I feel like can be fixed in firmware. And so that's like the only thing on here that is like a firmware fix. And I just update it in Icon. That's really annoying. Like, why is that even a thing? This is a vlogging style flip out screen and you can't see whether the mic is, you can't see what the mic level is. That's silly. That is a silly mistake. That should not have left the factory like that. Now let's move on to the good things because the good things are really, really good. The first thing I have here are the buttons, not just the back buttons, but all the buttons and all the switches and knobs are very clicky. They have a very um, physical click feel to them. And so you know when you push them that, that there's actually something happening with it, right? Click, click, click. And I like that. I like clicky buttons. I like a little, um, uh, a little verification that something is happening. The next thing I have on the good side is I really like the addition of the third step mark on the shutter dial. So most of the time, whenever I'm taking this out, I am shooting it as fun and I like to, to use the actual shutter dial. But whenever I'm using it behind the scenes, it's really cool to be able to set it to that third step. And what that does is it actually allows you to just click it over to that and then you can operate your shutter with your thumb on the back like I'm used to. So that's like much faster. And so if I'm shooting in a faster pace, like doing the behind the scenes things, then it's really nice to be able to operate the ZFC as fast as I operate the Z6 II. The next thing I have here is for this particular camera, a $1,000 camera, the low light focusing is like too good. I was not expecting it to be as good as the Z6 II. It's ever bit as good. I haven't tested side by side, but it might be a little bit better even. Um, in really dark, dark scenes, this thing can grab focus and I, I, it's just too good for this price range. And so like, I mean, that had to be in this video. I don't shoot low light all the time, but it is really nice to know that this little cheapo $1,000, well, cheapo compared to everything else, camera, it can handle really low light focus. Very, very impressive. Good job, Nikon. In video, I'm watching myself right now. The eye tracking is, I think, better than the Z6 II. It has not lost my eye once. In fact, I'm doing this and it's not, it's not falling off. It's like it's staying on my eye. I wonder if I go like this, now it's on my finger, boom, on my eye instantaneously. So as far as making videos go, it is like spot on on the eye tracking. Next thing I have is the EVF resolution is really good. Um, I didn't really pay attention to whether or not um, it was significantly lower than the Z6 II and Z7 II. Um, I, I wasn't expecting it to be as good. I don't know what the dots are, but it's really good. It's crisp, it's clear, it's clean. Uh, it looks really good. Like the resolution is a lot better than I was expecting Nikon to put in on, you know, being a thousand dollars less than other options. The next thing I have is button placement. Uh, they did a really good job with the layout. I love specifically the top of the camera is a really nice compact. I mean, everything is, is within finger reach. So if you're holding the camera, I mean, you can reach everything from this side and you can do everything you need to on the other side. There's not much on, on the, the ISO side, but the point I'm getting at is that the button and switch placement is really, really good. It'd be nice to have a few more buttons on the empty space on the back, but I mean, what can you expect out of a thousand dollar camera? At the very least, they did a really good job of laying everything out that they felt like they wanted to put into this camera. Files look great. They look like Nikon files. And honestly, in a lot of shots, putting, you know, the ZFC next to the Z62 uh, files, you can't really tell a difference. Not that you really would with four megapixels, but the files look like Nikon files. I was expecting that. I wasn't expecting them to look like like subpar files, but it's worth mentioning that the files do look really great. The last thing I wanna mention, really a really quick thing, and it may not matter to you, it doesn't really matter to me, but the power up time is really fast. And that's really good for me with this camera, not that it would kill me, but um, with this camera being something I just have on me all the time in case something exciting happens, um, it's nice to have it power up quick. In conclusion, I think the ZFC, I can recommend it for people that just want to enjoy 
shooting photography that like that slower manual process. I do not think this is the camera for you if you are brand new and a beginner. I still think the Z50 would probably be the better option. However, if you're already shooting photography and you have maybe a little bit of gear acquisition syndrome or maybe you're wanting to do some more video, like self-portrait style video or photography, the ZFC it has just been a lot of fun in the last couple of weeks for, for me to just go out and shoot. I've taken it to a couple of meetups and shot behind the scene. It did that perfectly well. Uh, it, it, it's come in handy just having it around, uh, going out to the lake and, and taking my dog around the lake because she goes on a ride every day and just having that for whenever something happens, like the geese are doing something funny, you know, and I just, I have it there or I catch a good landscape or I didn't know there was going to be, um, a, a good sunset today. It's been nice to have around and it's perfect for that. It weighs absolutely nothing. And so if you're looking for just a little beater camera to take around, I highly recommend the Nikon ZFC. I've been having a blast with it and I'm actually making this video on the ZFC right now. So if you have questions about the video quality, just go back and watch this video again with that in mind. I've been watching myself the whole time and the eye autofocus is super good. It is better than the Z6 II in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below if you have the ZFC, if you love it, if you hate it, if you're thinking about getting it. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo, and I will catch you in the next one.